Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for the very warm and energized welcome to the podium. Political leader, the Honorable Kamla Passad Bissessa, Deputy Political Leader, Senator the Honorable Jolene John, members of the National Executive, Member of Parliament for the constituency of Naparima, the very distinguished Rodney Charles, host Member of Parliament, Ms. Michelle Benjamin from the Maruga Tableland constituency, and I'll say more about this warrior princess in a bit. Members of Parliament, the Honorable Anal Ram is here with us as well. The Honorable Ravi Ratiram is also in our midst. Executive members of this constituency, activists, supporters, all assembled here. Viewers and listeners on our social media platforms throughout Trinidad and Tobago, in the Caribbean, in North America. A special hello to our supporters in Canada, in New York, in Miami, and across the Caribbean. Tonight, I'm very pleased to be here. Members of the press, I welcome you as well, as well as members of the protective services that are here this evening. It is my great honor and privilege to address you at this very important pavement meeting, pavement report in the constituency of Maruga Tableland. I ask you to give a warm, warm round of applause to our sister, Michelle Benjamin, for the wonderful work that she has been doing in the parliament and in the constituency. Brothers and sisters, we have reignited the pavement report so that we can return to the constituencies on a weekly basis to educate, to inform, to agitate, to organize our constituencies as we prepare for war, as we prepare for battle, as we prepare for struggle against this dictatorship of Rowley. It is very important that we speak to the issues and we speak the truth and we educate the population. An important function of a political party is something called political education. To educate the people on what is happening. Today, the United National Congress is the most dynamic, well-organized political party in opposition in the entire Caribbean. In the entire Caribbean. In the Caribbean, I have studied politics for many, many years. Generally, in the Caribbean, when a party goes into opposition, the party goes to sleep for five years. And when the election year comes, the party wake up. And when the party wake up, you can't find the people who went to sleep. Because at the front set come by then. This is a party that has been on the boil, that has been mobilizing, Activated, working under the leadership of Kamla Prasad Bissessa and the executive of this party. No party in the Caribbean does this. Jolene John is spearheading our communication campaign. Jolene John is like a general on the ground. Where Sunday morning press conference, midweek press conference, Thursday pavement report, Monday night, Monday night report. Which political party does that? Man, not even a government party could make that. And they have all the resources. They have all the people struggling along with the different um, uh, make work programs and so on. But the UNC is on the move. We are on the move. And you must give a round of applause to the political leader, the Honorable Kamla Passad Bissessa, and her team. When I ask the organizers, I say, is there any problem? You want help? You want anything? Anything going wrong? I think, they say, boss, everything under control, you know? We have everything under control. It is only the UNC can say that, can do that in every community. And next week, we roll into, I believe, it's Shaguanas West, Jolene, or East. Shaguanas East next week for our pavement. Next week, Monday, we are in St. Joseph. We are on the boil. We are on the move. So I want, to, I want to tell you, do not take the old talk and the commerce and couture, you know. People like to make couture and things in, in politics, huh? The political leader announced the other night, she said, we open for nomination. Well, by the Guardian, another newspaper, the Guardian in particular, they still see that as a recipe for couture. 
They start. Who running? Who not running? Who walking? Who creeping? Who crawling? They start with that bacchanal already. I'll tell you something. Do not get tied up in bacchanal and commerce. There, there is one political leader here. Her term of office will run until, until 2025. There is no vacancy. There is no room. And today I tell all those with ambition, wherever they are, don't be delusional. Don't be delusional. Don't get set up. I want to tell you, William Shakespeare said, he said ambition should be made of stern stuff. So when you, are, you have ambition, you should come with stern stuff. Remember that. And don't be delusional. And I put it on the table immediately before I really begin some of the issues. The PNM has a history. They have a history of seeking to infiltrate, whether it's the ULF, whether it's the NAR, whether it's the UNC, of infiltrating sometime with people who were members of the PNM in the first place. People who walk out, pull out a red shirt, put on a yellow shirt and reach. And we embrace everyone. This is a party that embraces everyone. The chairman introduced me with a nice introduction. I want to tell you something. In the UNC, I have been there from the birth of the UNC. I see plenty of people come. I see people go. And I see people come back. And gone back. I see it all. I see it all. So don't, don't worry. I, I am strong. I have the heart for that. I have the back for that. So do not take, you know, cage up about leadership and things. There's no leadership vacancy here. None at all. Put that away. There, there is a party. We have one vision. We have a program. We have a policy. We are the government. We are the government of Trinidad and Tobago. I tell you, Michelle is correct. All those infrastructure problems we are seeing. Rowley come down to Barakpo. He come, he come to Light Dia and so on. When I see that, I say, well, he come with a helicopter. Because he, he would have to leave Independence Day to reach here for Diwali. He could not pass through the road on School Hill, Papori Road, Barakpo, where people protesting. He couldn't pass through there to reach Barakpo to, for, for Diwali. There is a scam going on, Michel has it right. There's a company called the Rural Development Company. Another one called the Secondary Roads, something, something, something. Rural Development Company just gave out $150 million in contracts. Some small, some big. They are giving contracts to the friends and family of the PNM. They are giving contracts through Bubble. There's a particular operative in the Rural Development Company. What he's doing, he's taking the engineer estimate, which say how much the work should more or less cost. And he going around by the PNM contractors and he sharing that like nuts, like doubles. So when you see the contract, the engineer say 4 million, you come in at 3.9 million. That's what is happening now. And they are giving it to people who cannot do the work. They cannot do the work. So they come on the road, they take millions of dollars, they have no bitumen, they have no oil sand, they don't even have melon. But they come, the PNM is paving the road with butter. They paving the road in this country with butter. So they pave a road two months later. When you're driving, you pass a neighbor on the road, he, he car five feet ahead of you in, uh, on top of your head. This is the only country where one road does have a car five feet on the head, you know. If you take a picture from an angle, you think one car driving up that the next car. Right now, down Papari Road, we saw it coming down here. And no matter what we say, they continue their corruption. They blame us for everything under the sun when we were there. I'll tell you something. Jolene John is here. We built over 8,000 houses. We gave out 100 houses a week. Anybody ever say, one of the houses Munilal, Jolene John built, fall down, collapse? Them that start a house as an apartment and end as a duplex because it's split in two. That's how them just build house. When they build a house, it's a mobile house. After two, three years, it moves about three, four feet. That's the house they build in. In Trust Trail, they build a house there. They build two set of units, about 100 units or so. Do you know they have recommended to demolish that? 
to demolish that? I tell them a few weeks ago, I say the, the, the flooring have no steel, the ceiling have no beam, that just have beam and thing to hold on a roof if the hurricane come and so on. None. They build that, the HDC built that, the HDC supervised that, the HDC did the infrastructure for that. They have no infrastructure. Listen, I'm mad about, I don't know, about 50 years ago, my mother built a house <laughs> somewhere in St. Madeline. When she built the house, if you see the matting on the ground, the thickest iron, well, I don't know, about six to eight feet of matting by every post. Nothing could throw down that house. If you want, you could stand up there. I had mother and father who was a little heavyweight and thing. Them could dance on the floor. I tell them if they dance and them hit the floor, you're pumping in the sand. Because you're going down in the sand. That's where you're ending up. That is their track record. So when they come to talk in the next election, they have nothing to offer, you know. They have nothing, they have built. They have built nothing and they have destroyed everything. They have no track record, brothers and sisters. None. So what do they do? They try to infiltrate the UNC for people to cause couture and say, oh, the party unstable, they destabilize and so on. They're fighting, this one fighting, that one fighting. That is the PNM in action. That is the, the blueprint of the PNM. And we must warn our supporters, don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. And the Guardian is, is, uh, and others are, are, are leading that charge, brothers and sisters. Today I look at the next story in the newspaper. You all know what has happened with this crime talk business and thing. And quite frankly, I want to tell you something. I ain't know about nobody, eh? But I read these and I speak on behalf of myself. I just speak on behalf of two people, Rudal and Munilal. These business people attacking the UNC today, newspaper articles. I one in my hand here somewhere, you know. Um, calling on you, um, have consultation and have talks and what put public safety first? Daily Express today, businessmen and so on. Look, I, I tired with these business leaders, fellas and thing, and a little tired with them. Why they don't go and buy a printer for a police station? Why they don't go and buy some ink for the police? Why they don't go buy a police station and tell them when you can't mash up, come by me, I will fix it. Police asked me the other day, and I'm not calling no name, no station. And police asked me the other day, they want help. What you want help for, brother? Mr. Policeman. I want to tell Rowley, anytime a police come by me, it's because they want help with water, with ink, with printer. That's all police has come by me for. And I just tell them, I'm afraid to take up a box and get them. They go, so God, police raid Bunila. Look, they're going with all the files. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I pray that. Police need help. Why these businessmen, instead of talking foolishness about the opposition and, and our position on crime talks and things, why, why are each of these businessmen, don't say, listen, 7,000 policemen, we give each of you policemen 10% discount come, when you come and shop by we. You get them, you motivate them. Tell the policemen get a discount in your shop. You ain't doing that, but they're talking foolishness about the opposition and we must meet and we must talk and things. Keith Rowley is the captain of the Titanic. He already hit the iceberg. What you gonna do? Give him an ice pick? You give him an ice pick? The, the business association must put politics aside and work to remove Keith Rowley and the PNM from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Crime will only be fixed when they go because that murder rate is when they are here. You cannot fix crime if the PNM is in office. You cannot. Today, there are two governments in this country. There are two governments. And listen carefully. There is a government calling the self-government, led by Keith Rowley, that operates from Whitehall and the Diplomatic Center. The next government is run by the gang leaders of Trinidad and Tobago. There are two governments here. Rowley has abandoned government. They have given up on the fight against crime. They have given up. All the programs we put in place, brothers and sisters, Community Comfort, uh, E999, um, National Operations Center, all of that, Joint Army Patrols and so on. They put Joint Army Patrol, the Joint Army Patrols are robbing people. They say the Joint Robbery Patrol. I'll come into that in a little while too. They abandon our programs, our policies that were put in place by John Sandy, Jack Warner, Gary Griffith, Emmanuel George, our ministers, National Security Chairman Kamla Prasad Bisesa. All our programs they abandon. 
Today, when they cannot fix it, they talk in a set of rubbish and want to blame the opposition. So Rowley say he not participating in that. He's sending his ministers. The fellow who he's sending the lead, they catch him lying in Miami. They catch him lying in the parliament. The next fellow he put there, the minister of national security, that fellow is permanently sleeping. When he's awake, his mind is asleep. That is who they put for the crime talk. Then they put the fellow who was the minister, who's the minister, Kalutia or something too. I don't know how he reached there. He reached there because he got lost on the road. And who, who else they put there? Somebody, I forgot again. Rowley doesn't want to participate because he knows he cannot do anything because they have conceded the government to the gang leaders of Trinidad and Tobago. The gang leaders calling the shots. There are areas in this country where gang leaders behaving as if there's police. Yeah. And they give instructions to the police. I want you to remember in 2022, 2022, there was an article in the newspaper, Police Service Commission, 2022 report. Well, the article is in 2023, a few days ago, but the report is 2022. A few days ago, a report in the newsday. 8% of the public have confidence in the police. Could you imagine that? Some of you may say, you mean it's so much people are confident in the police? That means eight out of 100 human beings say I have confidence in the police. That's an amazing thing. That is a public policy issue. That is an issue for a government. You could blame Ola Christopher how much you want and all these police. I think that is a government public policy issue to build confidence in law enforcement. But if people have confidence in a government, they will have confidence in law enforcement. So the people have no confidence in the government of Trinidad and Tobago. That is the point. And this is why the criminal justice system is as it is. If a man murders somebody in front of 50 people, 51 people say they see nothing. They will not go to court. They will not give evidence. They have no confidence that the police can protect them. When three people were shot recently around a police station, the most dangerous place to be in this country is outside a police station. Most dangerous. And now outside an insurance company. Most dangerous place to be outside a police station in this country. But that is not to be fixed only by the police. That is for policy makers, ministers. When we had a minister in Gary Griffith and others too, but Gary Griffith, he ensured that he was out there with the police working in a proactive way by the hour in real time, so to speak. He was managing so that people had confidence. Do you know when, when we were in office, 34% of the people had confidence in the police service. And we were going to lift that to 60%. Today is 8%. We have filed a freedom of information request. We want the full report by the Police Service Commission on confidence in police. And that is critical. In no part of the world you can deal with murder and crime if you have no confidence in the people who are there to protect you. How are you going to do that? How that will happen? So brothers and sisters, this is why in another article, PCA tells um, the a, a Committee of Parliament, Public Accounts Committee, complaints against police increasing. Imagine more and more people are complaining about the behavior of what? Policeman. More and more people. So we complain about the behavior of the criminal element. We complain about the behavior in the road or the street. Now we complain about the behavior of law enforcement. This again is an important public policy issue. And when these complaints are registered by the police service commission, um, complaints by the police service, complaint authority, that thing, where does it go? If you go and make a report today and say, I had a bad experience on the road with the police, uh, for whatever it is, wherever it is, you make the report, 10 years later, you say, well, what happened to the report? Man say, hey, the man who take that, but he gone on retirement. And we have that. Um, that in the paper somewhere, that file and thing, we're working on that. Years pass. I made a report about police already years ago. A policeman threatened to lock me up too, on the highway somewhere. I said, what? I made a complaint. Well, me gone, the complaint gone, the policeman gone. Two, three years later, he come, he come by my door. I said, what happened? He said, well, my boss, you could help me to get a house. That is where we are in the society. That is where we are, brothers and sisters. 
nothing works under the PNM, and we have to face up to that fact. We have to, and the business associations must face up to that. Monroe Road, I read just today or yesterday, another home invasion. Invading your homes. But this will not stop. I'm sorry to tell you, I really regret to tell you, this will not stop so long as the PNM is in office. Don't feel it will stop. Don't feel. And don't feel you could bully the opposition. Bully the opposition into any position. The opposition is the strongest it has ever been in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. So don't come with that. Keith Rowley cannot manage this economy. And there's another crisis I will speak briefly on. It's a crisis, really, of men, of masculinity, of boys. You see, I, don't, I, I promise a fellow organizing this meeting, I won't get too sophisticated. I, he tell me if I talk too much, too sophisticated talk, he go jump on the car and drive out. I don't want him to leave. But I'll tell you something. The crisis facing the male is rooted. There are very serious sociological, psychological issues and so on there. Yeah? It cannot be solved overnight. Let's start with that. But the, the, the problem that faced today in the suicide hotline, Ministry of Health, the majority of calls are for men. The majority of homeless people on the road are men. The problem today is, is a crisis where more and more help need to be targeted to young males to deal with issue of management of gender relations, of relations with women, with girls, with wives, with common law, wife, spouse, and so on. That is a crisis that we face. It is a multidisciplinary challenge, meaning not one area you could deal with will deal with it. It's multi. But I'll tell you, there are some causal factors that you can deal with almost in the short to medium term. The, the issue is unemployment. The economy has collapsed. And this is a result of the economy collapsing. Where the breadwinner, the male traditionally, he is out of job. He has no money. He has no job. He cannot put food on the table. He feels lesser than himself. He loses self-confidence. He loses self-esteem. And when that is happening, the partner who before 50 years ago was weaker in an economic sense is now stronger in an economic sense. Even in education, in training. So yes, it is very important that both male and female emerge together in terms of employment, empowerment, social status, jobs and so on. But, but we need to also focus on the male crisis that we face in the country. And you have to do that by repairing the economy, creating the jobs. Two days ago, today's what day, what day, Friday? Thursday. Yesterday, time is cool. Yesterday, a supermarket in my constituency put out an ad. They say everybody who had a job in this supermarket, come. They had 20 jobs to offer. 300 people line up with brown envelope under their arm in the hot sun. I have the pictures. Young people, you know, I went. I mean, I had to go. It's my constituency. So I went to talk to some of these people. I can't talk to 300 people. I take a little picture and think. I said, tell me something. You came here. Yes, yes. Need job, need job, need job. I said, well, what is your qualification? The people in the line, you know what they had in the brown um, envelope? They didn't have their marriage certificate or their birth certificate, you know. They had degree from the university, diploma from the university, eight or level subjects, a cape and so on, advanced level, diploma and all type of thing. I said, but what you applying for? They said, well, it have people here, they're they going to need people to pack the shelf. They need people to cash. They need people in the warehouse to do inventory and thing. I come for that. With a degree, 300 persons, generally young, multi-ethnic, multicultural, not one race or, or so, came for jobs at a, at a grocery that will hire 20, 30 people. 300. And with brown envelopes with university qualifications. That is the society Rowley created. When we were in power and you were a job, you go point Lisa's with your brown envelope. Today, you go by the grocery with your brown envelope. That's the difference. Rowley cannot run a parlor. Behind me here is a parlor, you know, right behind me in this little place, in this place. Hey, Michelle? Yes. In the back there, it has bread, it has corn curls, it has chubby. If you give Rowley to run this, he busts this in about a month. He will bust this in a month, I'm sure. That fella cannot run anything. That's how they run themselves. 
That's how they run themselves. This is why when Mrs. Passard be says as Prime Minister, they create one sort of thing about uh, who in the house or who living in the Prime Minister, resident with her, her sister was there, what she doing and thing. That fella moving with the whole Walton's family, you know. And the night is good night, John Boy, good night, Mary Ellen, good night. The taxpayer was buying clim milk, you know. Nobody say anything, nobody say anything. That is the man family. If his son and all living like Gardamda there, well, that the family. So all they're going to know is that, I know. But the, everybody, son-in-law, brother-in-law, everybody living there together. You know, I mean, culturally, what was going on there, you know? So, brothers and sisters, they cannot run a parlor. Fallas and economy. And that has led to this crisis we face with male-female relationship, in part. I know there the, is a much deeper issue. And that is an issue that we will confront. We must invest in jobs. But you know what we must invest to? We must invest in sports, in culture, in community. Two cricketers recently, the guy called Lindell Simmons and Jason Mohammed, I believe, from these areas and so on, are appealing to fix cricket ground in their name. Imagine you have grounds named after great West Indian players and Karaili vine growing on the fence. Huh? When you go on the ground, the snake could bite you. That is where we are today. But we must invest in sports. We must invest in culture, in panyards, in um, yeah, orchestra, in music, in dancing, in singing, and all these things. That will absorb the energy of a lot of our young people. Uh, give them an exposure for their talent. And the UNC and the partnership was doing that. We must invest in the, in the religious centers, the mosque, in the church, in the in mandir and so on, so that they can do more work in the community. This is why we have fallen down this way, brothers and sisters. This is why you see what you see in the newspaper almost every day. Because they have destroyed the sports, they have destroyed culture, they have destroyed uh, jobs, employment, and so on and so forth. And that, and that, is, and that is the reality that faces us. Brothers and sisters, that is the reality that faces us. I would tell you as well, I would tell you as well that there, I don't want to take too much of your time, but there are two issues that I raised a few nights ago, which I just want to deepen at this point, to tell you that there is a crisis, as you all know, recently at TSTT. When we were in office, there was a pink head man somewhere on TV or something, his head was pink. And they say, this fella was from something called Cambridge Analytica. And the, and the UNC and partnership had somehow taken all your personal data and give it away to them and so on. Rowley cry blood. Mechanics go tell you he blow a gasket. When he all over the country gone crying how the partnership give away their data. And oh God, people know where he living and people know how much house he built and people know this and people know that. TSTT just lost over 1 million files of individuals and clients in Trinidad and Tobago. Rowley says nothing. He says nothing. They lost important data and I kept telling people, you all may think that that is something intangible, meaning you can't see it, you can't feel it. You know if somebody steal your car, you know, well, I lost my car. My car gone. I have my car. If somebody steal your TV, well, they take my TV. They take my cell phone. But you don't understand when people take your data, your information, that is more dangerous. They pretend they are you to do criminal acts. And then the police come by your door looking to charge you. They use the data, brothers and sisters, to see where you live in. If you have an alarm, when you just put on the alarm, they will use the data to see if you have a dog. Which part you just carry this dog, which vet does see this dog. They will use that data to track you down, to see when your house is vulnerable so they can attack you at home or they can attack you on the place to work, where you park in your car. They can use data that they hack to break into your car and dismantle your alarm system. That is a critical. We live in an age of technology. Technology does everything around us. Everything and the, the stealing of that data is critical. Tonight, I want to call again, MP Barry Padarat did it before, for the government to fire the board, the PNM board of the TSTT, Mr. Sean Roach and others. We have received the information just today, you won't believe this one, that the TSTT board knew of that hacking. 
they knew of it they got a report from the management indicating the risk and what had happened and they failed to inform the minister who then went and lied in parliament on november 1. the board they fire one manager as if she went somewhere and plug out a, pull out a plug and all the data gone they fire her okay she's responsible she, she'll get fired we're here the last of that but she got fired but the board had information today we call on them to fire the board mr roach all of them must go they mismanaged that crisis failed to inform a minister who then lied to the parliament all of them must go they're incompetent they're inefficient that board and today i can tell you a report has been produced with a chronology of all the timelines in that crisis that prove that the board were informed weeks before they lied so it was part of a conspiracy to cover up that from people don't forget it is the opposition who exposed things in this country the government don't do you remember the famous mosquito crack down by the mosquito creek the place they break mash up like you know it's dixie biscuit it mash up like dixie biscuit on your plate the road there huh we expose that we expose in the parliament as well trash trail we expose la salturas houses fall down the pnm never say nothing about that they don't say anything about that brothers and sisters they don't come to the parliament and admit anything and they know they have squandered millions of dollars and the risk involved in that tstt rowley says nothing he go all over the world he just carried a short fella with him like passepartout you remember around the world in 80 days it have no place on the earth this fellow ain't gone yet huh? i tell you it have no place on earth here gone yet the said the only place here gone is jail <laughs> but i don't know i mean i don't i don't like to talk about that yeah. what you say yeah. oh i ain't saying that they travel the whole world but what struck me is when rowley made recently he made a remark at the press conference i listened to him you see i listen to him i don't like watching him but i listen to him he said that we travel the whole world because we just go to where power is where the decision maker is where the real deal is we're going he is trying to excuse himself for spending 20 million dollars on foreign travel over the last five years and achieving nothing Ask Rowley to name one company that start a business in Trinidad resulting from any trip they take. Ask them to name one, one development program that occurred because of those trips. Nothing. Brothers and sisters, nothing. Myself, Jolene John and others, we went to China. We went to China one day. When we come back, a, a hospital in Cuba was being constructed. We went to Vienna, Austria. We went to Vienna too, man. Your boy gone there too. When I come back, Jolene John, San Fernando teaching hospital being constructed. That's how we move. That's how we move. When we travel, it is for some benefit to the people and it will happen. We don't go on no Mickey Mouse trip. They just go Washington. Eh? They, they put out a jacket and tie and walking around the place looking for Starbucks to see if it had anybody in a jacket and tie inside to go and have a meeting and taking pictures with fellas they say there's senator and thing nobody never see them in life if fellas just wear pinstripe suit they push a towel in their pocket here yeah? and a, 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 a silk tie or something like that and they say that fella looking important take a picture with him that is how they operate and spend millions of dollars the saudis had a meeting there they, they pelt him out as soon as they finish drop him like a, gab, a, a bag of garbage in barbados caribbean airline had to send a plane for him well it's one of the normal aircraft they're going to pick him up and bring him here Brothers and sisters, that is what they do. And while that is happening, nobody is accounting for TSTT and that debacle. The TSTT has paid millions of dollars, and every year they pay seven hundred thousand dollars to a company called Checkpoint. It's an American company. You know what is the purpose of Checkpoint? International cyber experts, man. Them job is to protect and control that data. To this day. They might check nothing and they point out nothing. Millions of dollars gone. They have no report. Now who really getting that money? We must check that out. That is what we have to check point out. Who getting that money? What deal it is there that this happened and nobody is accounting? 
Then they went and removed the lady, Lisa Egard, there. Then they put a fella there. Now, again, the man was, my brother here, Matura was reading out all my qualification and things, and I got frightened when he tried to pronounce come louder. <laughs> if he make one mistake, they will all have in trouble. So, brothers and sisters, that means with high distinction. So, brothers and sisters, they, they hire a man there. The fella was in customer service. I read his qualifications, which I confirmed to be truth. He has something called a mini MBA. Good. What is a mini MBA? I know what is a MBA and I know what is a mini. But I don't know what is a mini MBA. Fella has that only qualification, you know? He has some course he do in nine days or something. Nine, five days? He take a course in five days. And he put he have some big qualification in that. And then a series of seminars he attend for two days and one day and so on. He qualify to be CEO of TSTT, brother. That is over, I don't know, but maybe about $100,000 a month. Maybe more, I don't know. The fella have a mini MBA. So tonight I want to tell this fella, remove that mini and tell us what is this MBA about. I, is he qualified or was he put there because he know the one who know the one who know the one in the PP, in the PNM. Are there the snake in the balise operating there? And I don't care. Everybody does sue me, so he could sue me too. I go bring my CV and he go bring his CV. I'm more qualified to be the CEO than he. That is what I wanted to tell you tonight. So we call for an investigation into the qualifications of this acting CEO. And the board must be fired forthwith. When we put board to manage there, they make all kind of joke and say all kind of thing about the UNC members and board and thing. Nothing like this never happened, you know. Nothing like this, brothers and sisters. Nothing like this happened. So tonight, as I, I wanted, I, I wanted to put on the table that that TSTT crisis. You will hear more about that in the coming days, in the coming weeks, brothers and sisters. You will hear more about that. So they have collapsed everything. They have destroyed everything. There is nothing here again that they have not destroyed. Really, the the let me tell you something. The country today. I want to tell you. The only thing saving this country, the only reason people are still in this country is because of the United National Congress. And the hope, and the aspiration, and the dream that we will remove the PNM. So I want to tell people tonight as I close, because I didn't want to stay too long with you, in this business, you either lead, you follow, or you get out of the way. And I want to tell you something, I follow him. I'm not in the way. You lead, follow, or get out of the way. That is the program from now on. We, we carry the aspirations of 1.3 million people. We carry their dreams. When you have been in this business as long as I have, you must understand. Mr. Alam has been there for decades as well. When people see me, when they talk to me in the Gulf City Mall, they talk to me on the street, they talk to me at the at Pinal Debe areas and things, they talk and tell me that the UNC carries their aspirations. That is their hope, their only hope. A man see me say, when I see you, I, I, I feel a little hopeful, my heart swell. He say, when I see Kamla Pasad, I see the future. I see the future of our country. And today, don't let anybody fool you, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody fool you. I want to tell you something. The UNC built Trinidad and Tobago. That's a theme that Jillian John introduced uh, uh, some time ago. But that is correct. We mustn't lose sight of that. Huh? The UNC built this country. They maligned the airport so much. The airport today wins all the prizes for the best, biggest, most efficient airport in the Caribbean. We built the airport. We did that. We built all these schools. Tim Gopi Singh, Mrs. Pasad Bisesa, a hundred school and more. We built the South Campus of the University. We built the Coover Hospital, the Point Fortin Hospital, the Arima Hospital, the San Fernando Teaching Hospital, nine police stations, start three more, Mayaro Fire Station, uh, all over. So when you look at the UNC, we are the builders of Trinidad and Tobago. And that is why, that is why we must return there. That is why we must return there. We must go back there to build. These people are looting as they leave. They are in the departure lounge. 
And as I tell people, when they're in the departure lounge, you must check the, check the pocket, check the luggage. Get a little doggy and let them sniff out their luggage to see what they are carrying out. Because as they come to the end, they are getting more and more desperate. They are getting desperate. They will want to pack their bag. These people are now borrowing money to thief. I have it from good source. The next time I address you, I will speak about a loan that they embarked upon recently. They are borrowing money to thief it. Because they know 2025 20, before, whenever it is Kamla Pasad Bisesa, it is the United National Congress, it is the National Alliance for Transformation. It is those persons will form the government. So Rowley is going to travel the whole world. He will travel the whole world because when he leave office, who want to see he? Huh? When he leave office, you think anybody want to see? You think anybody pay any ticket? Huh? Them fellas travel in the whole world and they will enjoy everything. They travel all over the world, guzzling champagne, guzzling uh, drinks and so on, wolfing down strimps, that and, and, and steak. That's what they do all the time, all of them. That is their purpose now, to just eat out and drink out everything and leave. But I want to tell them, happy hour is over. Happy hour is over. And don't let anybody put you down. In this party, we have persons, I mean, you talk about my qualification and are happy, eh? flattered. But don't forget, there are persons in this party, engineers, lawyers, accountants, ACCA people, all qualified. In that opposition in parliament, people like to cast aspersions. We have 75 university degrees sitting down in opposition. 75 university degrees. We have people there who are doctors, lawyers, engineers, accountants, and so on. What do PNM have? Half of them unemployable, the next half untrainable. <laughs> what, what job? You ever thought which one of them getting a work? You were putting them to clean the school. When they leave office, they will not get a job to clean a school. They have no qualifications. Some of them only have a head to put on a hat. They have nothing, no other purpose to the head. So brothers and sisters, don't take old talk. This is not a time to take old talk. Take move along. Take chain up and so on. Now is a time to be focused. <laughs> you like that one shit? <laughs> yeah, but you need purpose that he had is to put on a hat. <laughs> so brothers and sisters, this is the time to unite, to mobilize, to stay strong. I want to acknowledge our sister Nicole Gopal. You put us on the map. She is the counselor for the Lakhtar District of Lengua, Indian Walk. We are on the map, and they will not beat her. They will not beat her at the polling station. They will not beat her in the courthouse. They will not beat her in the courthouse. They belong in the outhouse. That is where they belong. So brothers and sisters, thank you all for your attention. Long live the great people of Maruga Tableland. Long live our warrior princess. The very, very distinguished and hardworking Michelle Benjamin. Long live our great party. Long live our political leader. And longer live our struggle for justice, equality, and national unity. Thank you and God bless you all.